morning ladies and gentlemen. It's Greg here again with a, uh, an unboxing of the Sherman Firefly which I uh, showed you on my last update. Been after this kit for such a long time but it's always been too pricey, you know high 50s and things like that. I know there's the uh, Suka one and there's a this is the Dragon one and there's a, I think the couple of Dragon ones, I'm not too sure, I think there's another one like this but different model number, I'm not too sure. Anyhow, I've got this one on an auction, £34 plus £2.50 delivery, so bargain really. And I say apparently I was reading reading a bit of information about it. Uh, this is from the uh, the Yeoman's Guard, number 12 tank, and apparently this is the tank that took out Whitman. Um, they say there's always conflicting evidence and say it didn't, and these people say it did, but you know, obviously something took it out, took it out in the uh, 1945 so it may as well have been this one so yeah I was very very pleased with the price I really didn't think I'd win it at that price but really pleasantly surprised so you can see the nice box art on the front typical dragon box work really nice you know nice and on the side on the front on the side we just have the usual sort of thing uh, and there you can see the kit number is 6121 and it's just the same picture that's on the front, that's on the other side, and on this side we have the finished model. Looks very nice. And on the other side we just have the usual sort of German, English, and you know, one of the most innovations in British Armoured Division is the European campaign during World War II. The Sherman Firefly tank. There we go. With a 17 power high velocity gun enabled the Firefly to deal with front, uh, frontally with the German heavy tanks like the Panther and the Tiger. It was the Firefly that knocked, yeah, that knocked out Whitman's Tiger, killing the German ace. This can, yeah, so there's some, you know, truth towards that. And there's nothing on the back of the box this time, which is unusual for Dragon. But uh, we'll open up and see what we've got in here. I did have a metal vinyl for this somewhere. Um, I know I've got one somewhere. I bought it quite a while ago. Um, I don't think I've put it somewhere. I'll find it anyhow. But I do have a metal vinyl for this. So without further ado, let's open up and see what we've got. Typical dragon. Lots and lots of blue. You know why? I don't, it baffles me why they do this all the time. It must cost them wasting plastic. I know spares are nice to have, but do we really need all that? You know, I don't think we do. So it's going to be typical. Yeah, it's the old fold out. This is the thing that's dragging down. Is uh, yeah. it's it's too busy. You know, it's too busy. Should be broken down the better sections and that and the line between you know number two and number one of you know just a line across there same you know complete it carries on in the same vein obviously you have to study these like you normally do with uh with dragon instructions just to make sure you're doing the right with the right things putting them in the right places so it's just typical typical dragon yeah it's only 5, 17 there's 20 steps, you know, so it's not it's not a, a, a big build by any any stretch. And we have a couple of variations. We can do the 27th Canadian Armoured Regiment, 2nd Canadian Armoured Bridge, Berlin, France, 1944. Well, the Germans actually captured one, captured by a German army, Western Front, 1944. Didn't know that. Well, that's could be interesting, but I don't think I'll do that. And the two marking options we have third troop air squad north Hampshire, yeomanry france 1944 so this is the one i was on about that took out the time whitman and then we have the first it's rich uh, it looks like polish or russian armored regiment i can't pronounce it kresh or wiki armored regiment lances of the second warsaw yeah warsaw act armor division italy 1945 yeah it's got the so it's polish yeah, so we've got, we've got a few options, you know, with the kit. The uh, let's move it out of the way before it drops anymore. 
I'm going to have to sit there and study the uh, instructions first, as it with as it with being with the dragon. So it's. Uh, I don't know where have I put my knife again? Never put. Never. Never organised. Never ever organised. So the first brew, as you can see, it contains the turret. So, and the gun, which is two piece, unfortunately, but. A nice bit of texture on the turret. As you can see, the, you can pick it up. A nice texture on there, as you can see around it. A nice weld, weld lines along the top. I think let me see if I bring the light in perhaps a bit farther in this way. I don't know if you can make it out. You can just see the cast texture. I may, I may add a little bit more. I shall see. There we are. There we are. I can see it better now. Quite nice. And then we have the cupola and a bit of a gun mantlet, travel lock, and the uh, barrel, two piece barrel. Set, but I, have a, I do have a metal barrel, so I won't be using it. And there's a few little grab handles and little bits and pieces on there. So, yeah, it's quite nice. Let's brew a bee. Let's find out when it was made. I'll have a look on the box again in a moment, which I should have checked really. Before we go any further, I shall check that now. If it gives me a date, which it probably won't. No, no, nothing, nothing. So I know it's not a brand new kit, I know it's, you know, it must be a few years old. Every time I try to find one on, on eBay or any other one, it's so so expensive. It's uh, quite lucky to get that. Very lucky to get this one at that sort of price. So we'll have a look at the next screw. As you see, it contains the uh, upper hole and the lower hole, which is uh, really nice. Again, they've got that nice texture on the top and on the front. The glacius on the front, front armour. You can see where we are. There we go. You can see the nice weld seams as well. A nice texture on the front. And then we have the texture on the top. And we, uh, back towards the engine, where the engine uh, wheels are going to be. Nice low hull again. You know, with a few little uh, op uh, escape hatches and things. Nothing much on the side, so obviously that's all going to be built up. So it's pretty plain. And then we have the back of the engine deck there, which is nicely moulded again. Nice little uh, rivets and uh, rivets are uh, bolt heads. And I think that's part of the rear of the tank. They're all nicely moulded. I say that's it's got slight texture on there as well. A couple of uh, look like hatches. I'm not too sure I was at the extra armour on the side. I have to double check that. There again, all nicely moulded. No flash anywhere. Yeah, those hatches look quite nice actually. Little hatches. Nice bit of detail on those. Obviously there you can see the pioneer tails, spade and axe and bits and bobs there. The cleave uh like it's uh, cl I don't know what you call them. No, blind. Mine's gone dead again. What do you call these things? Like a crowbar type thing, isn't it really? Well that'll do for now. But yeah, nice nice texture again on the uh on the upper hull. So far so good. Let's hope the fit's nice. And we have obviously there's a lot of parts in this kit that is he saying with the instructions that won't get used. So I don't know which ones those are. But there's two sprues the same here and it's the running gear. So the wheels and the, the bogies. Nicely moulded again. Nice texture on the uh, on the cast number on the, the bogies. Really quite nicely done. And we have the wheels. There again, they look nice. It's uh, a slight seam line around them, but that won't take long to clean up. And again, we have the, uh, the sprocket, which must be three or four parts, if I remember rightly. I when I was reading the instructions this morning. 
I think that's the extension for the rear of the tank, I think, or the front one too sure, I think it's the rear. And then we have the final drive for the sprocket to go on. Nicely moulded again. I love these little raised raised um, bolt heads, really nicely done. So there's two sprues those, but I don't know if they're the ones that's going to be used on the uh, making of the Firefly. We'll find out as we build it. So. No, I'm sure I could build another kit out of this if I had another hook, another old hull, probably could. In fact, I have an old Italiari Sherman, so I might use uh, all the bits on added to that. Right, another small sprue, it's just a single sprue this time, with uh, looks like hatches and other small bits and pieces. Again, nicely moulded. We have the light guards there, which is slightly on the uh, thick side. I do believe it's photo etching it for the uh, light guards. There we go, all nicely moulded. The cupola there, I'm not too sure which if that's the one to use. Are we going to use the first one? There again, nicely moulded. No clear parts, which is a shame. But, uh, and then we have the uh, 50 cal, I believe. Which is not, not bad really, it's quite nicely moulded. I think I'll just drill a few of them little uh, holes out. The old Dremel, so I can get into there with a few fine uh, drills and see what, see what I can do. So, so there's just lots of little bits and pieces here. Uh, obviously build up this up into uh, sections. And there we are, that's part of the gun. Obviously for the traverse of the gun, up and down. And again some more, it looks like Drive, it's meant to do the drive, final drive, not too sure. But, uh, yeah, there's no injection marks where the way you can see them, which is another good another good bonus. There's a few on the back side of these hatches unfortunately, but they're I can sand those out. There's one that risen there, I think. Let's find out I'll just rub a sand stick over it and see what happens, but obviously if I'm having it open then I'll have to do that, but that's the only ones I can see so far. Which is in the obvious place, which you're going to see, so they'll have to be sanded out or filled in. Yeah, yeah, it's not too bad. And I say there's a couple on there as well. Unfortunately, they're going to be difficult to get out, but we'll try my best if I decide to have it open. Which is a shame. I wouldn't have thought there'd be uh, anything like that in a dragon kit, but there you go. But, you know, I'm sure we'll work it out and get them out. Just a little bit of time and effort. And then we have another sprue, which got one one large, so the one sprue in there, and a small sprue with, in there with it. So there's no date on the actual uh, on the sprue gates either. We have more wheels, so there again, I don't know if these are the ones we're going to use. Which probably looks like it with this being a newer sprue and only a small sprue, so I would think these are the wheels we've got to be using. A little touch of flash there on that wheel. Is it flash or yeah, just a little touch, nothing, nothing that uh, I can't deal with. All the rest are fine, and there's no seam on these ones, which is good. No seam line, so there's just them two connection points on each wheel to uh, clean up. And a few grab handles and a few small detail parts, which are nicely molded again. And the sprue gate on where they're attached is quite thin, which is a bonus as well. Uh, and then we have looks like the uh, cover for the final drive, the transmission cover, which is nicely moulded again. It's got a texture on it again, you can see that. Nicely moulded. Some more wheels, some more bits for the uh, this must for the uh, for the front cover on this part that I was saying on here. Yeah, there's the uh, Front bit for the final drive, I think, I'm causing for the transmission, I'm not too sure. And then we have these pieces that go around the edges on the front. A couple of small detail parts again. I think that's the fire extinguisher on there, on the 17. It looks like it. A little bits and pieces again with them things. I'm actually sure always, you know, I always double check when you get parts like this. Should that piece be on there or is it just the, you know, when it's been injected into the mould? I always double check because sometimes I cut them off and they're supposed to be on. But, uh, 
Some of them are quite obvious and some of them are not. We have a light there that looks like a light. Light covers. Not too sure. But yeah. Yeah, nice thing we'll do again. So let's move on to the next one. Quite a few screws and then we have another which I think this is the one we'll be using I think in the front of the uh, on the front of the tank and braces. These small screws I think these must be the to make it into the Sherman. Nice bits and pieces molded again. I'm not sure what that is. I'll have to read about that. I don't know what that is. It looks like a I don't know. So these are a little bit uh, uh, interesting to find out what they are. Some nice detail work on the uh, track on these trackers and the um, cleaning rods. There's a slight couple of pin marks in there, so it's going to be difficult to get out. The detail on that little, that little fine piece, if you can see, you can just see the you know the injection marks. On the inside, is that the outside? Yeah, the inside of the uh, just um, you know, quite difficult to get out, but we'll persevere and get them up. So they're nicely detailed. Yes, you know, ah, so it says 60 pound rockets, it says on top of the sprue. So I didn't know that, so now I do. So interesting to see the build up of those. Nice, something new, you learn something new every day. And then we have uh, the same, but two sprues the same, so obviously there's a couple of rockets to go on there. And then we have, oh this is nice, this is lovely texture on this. Texture on the, uh, on the front cover, it's really nice. Really, really nicely done. And then we have the, you know, the gun lock, when well, it's travelling. It looks like some sort of suspension. Well, hatches again. I know these hatches are still the same, and they've still got a couple of little pin marks in there. I think they're sunken, so they have to be filled, which is no big, you know, no big hassle. And there's some nice texture on those covers as well, as you can see. Actually, I'm looking forward to building this kit eventually, and that's the uh, bolt heads that go along the front. So nicely detailed again. Take a nice wash, bring them bolts out. So what that part is there, the cleaning rods, I'm not too sure. There's some nice pieces in there, and there's obviously a little few little pieces that need cleaning up and taking the injection marks out, but right, this is another spray with wheels in again, so I really don't know what which ones are for what, but then we'll, we'll open them up and see anyhow. There's two screws the same here again, so this is a possibility these could be for the Firefly or another version. It's uh, there again. The wheels are nicely moulded, these are the uh, one with the holes in. I'll have to double check which ones I'll be using. Nicely moulded, nice detail on them. Yeah. And there again, on the pass of the suspension again, the bogies. The other ones are nicer texture on them. These have got very little texture, no cast number on them, as you can see. So, uh, when we get into the build, we'll find out which ones to go. So, I've got plenty of bloody spare wheels in here for Sherman's. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. So, they are nicely moulded again, there's nothing wrong with the moulds. So, no flash, easy to clean, only two, two small injections, uh, sorry, two small sprue gates on the wheels again to take out. That's why that's nice, nice. That's uh, for that many bloody wheels, I don't know which is which. So. And then we have a large sprue for the tracks, which will look quite in depth to be honest. This could be a nice and uh, interesting build. After building the Meng Panther track, this should be a breeze, he says. So we have one, two, three sprues. Of the tracks, the yeah, Firefly M4 Air 4, F. So, obviously, you have the track pads on the front there, and then we have off the end of the uh, let's see the detail on those, you can see quite nicely detailed. They'll be going on the end of the tracks, 
again. It's going to be interesting to see to build these. So two cleaning points per pad. And what's the other side like? They're quite nicely detailed, they're nicely moulded, nice uh, a slight injection mark on them but there again is it, is it an injection mark it's hard to tell it's hard to tell just under that little nub on the nose you see is that a, looks like an injection mark to me which is a shame we'll have to see how they go together first and then I'll decide if I'm going to use them or go after market I'll have to see I'll have to see they're nicely, they're nicely moulded, and there's nice, you know, nice detail on them. Again, there's just that little slight pin, an injection mark on it, which is a shame. But I'm not sure we've caught with that. Well, I probably will use these. You know, I don't want to spend any more money on them. I'll see how they go together. Hopefully, nicely. You spend time and effort, and you get a good reward in the end. You know, you know there's, no, there's no need to rush or race. And then we have a. Uh, the decals, which is a little resealable bag, and a little bit of zimmer it that I said with the um, light guards and things like that. So we've got those. These will probably be better, obviously, they'll be more, they'll be more accurate in the uh, detail, so then we'll be using those. And the decals don't look too bad. They don't look too bad at all. A bit shiny perhaps, but I do have now I do I bought some um German stencils. I've got three sets of uh from Voyager, so I probably will use to do the crosses to use the um the stencils and the number. So obviously that's the German captured one and the English one obviously we've got there and that's the uh, Russian or uh, Polish. So number 12 tank there, obviously that's the English version. We've got uh, some, uh, not a lot of details, but decals, but quite nice. It's a little bit shiny. So it says here, copyright 1994, probably when this kit was probably produced, I would think. Yeah, printed in Japan by a dragon. So I've never, I've only built a, one dragon kit and the details were fine, the decals were fine, so I wouldn't have thought there'd be any, any problems with them, but. I'll have to look up and see if I can get the English um, stencil. Quite nice, it'll be interesting if I can get an English stencil for the numbers and things like that. I'll keep an eye out for them. So that's the unboxing complete of the Sherman Firefly, the Dragon version, obviously 135 scale. So I've been looking forward to that for quite a while. Um, I do have another kit. Um, which came is the the new um, trumpeter tiger with the zimmeret, and I actually treated myself to um, some metal tracks for it. So when I do the uh, review for those, uh, we do that shortly. I'll show you them. They're not the uh, frill ones. I think there is the Ace ones, just about the same price. And apparently, I these have got better detail than the frill ones. So, and that was a uh, YouTube video I was watching just to compare them the two. And um, they reckon that the Ace ones are a lot better and the nicer detail, less clean up and things like that. There's not much clean up anyhow, but you know the pin the, when you have to drill the pins out sometimes on the floor ones. Apparently you don't have to one these ones. It's just straight in. We obviously get the wire, but I'm going to do what Andy's uh, hobby headquarters is. I'm going to get the staples, uh, bend them out, and try that way. So. And leave one, you know, the link at the end, like he does, and then obviously we're taking them off and on. Be easier to do. So well, we'll give it a go. I've never built any before, so it'll be a nice challenge. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to try and burnish them or just spray them with uh, a nice black undercoat for metal. Well, when we get to that, I'll uh, I'll decide. So I think that's about it. I'm going to carry on with the builds that I've got on my desk. These, these, the obviously you know I've got the uh, GS3. Um, which is coming along nicely. I'm going to start to weather that shortly, and of course the Matilda, which I've uh, done something slightly different instead of the English version. I've done it, made it German. I've seen a nice picture of a German captured Matilda, so that's what I'm doing. Um, I'll carry on with the weather in today of that. 
So hopefully by the end of the week that should be finished and the GS3 should be nearly finished as well. And then I think I'll move on to the next build which will be the Meng King Tiger. So that'll be another interesting build with Paul and Jack and I think Neil as well. You know the mad Welshman. I think he's joining us on that buddy build as well. So it'll be an interesting build between us four. So hopefully Jack can, uh, can stay the pace this time Jack won't you? Eh? Get that bloody Tiger out of the... Uh, Full interior and get it built. <laughs> he'll do. He'll be fine. He'll do it in his own time. So it's like you say. Thank you very much for uh, for watching and taking the time out of your day to do so. And thank you to my subscribers and the new subscribers. And I keep getting every now and again, which is which is really nice. Things are moving on in the right direction. So I must be doing sort of something right. So this will be me, Greg, signing off, and we shall see you soon.